In this video, I want to demonstrate using the pen tool, but I want to do it in a way that allows you to follow along. In some of the comments in my other videos, some of the viewers have expressed interest in downloading files that I've been using to follow along as I trace the objects on the screen. So that's what I want to be able to do here for you. So what I've done is I've created a link to this file that you see in my Dropbox account that you can download right now. That link is available in the video description below. I'm going to show you how that works just by copying the link into the browser. But while you're down there, click the like button, click subscribe, and ring my bell. So I'm going to go over to the Safari web browser, and I'm going to paste in the link that's in the video description. Once you get to this screen, a dialog window may appear, prompting you to create a Dropbox account or to sign into your own account. You don't have to click either. You can just choose no thanks, continue. That should make the dialog window go away so you can see this screen. When you get here, all you have to do is click the download button in the top right and then choose direct download. The folder just downloaded to my downloads. I'm going to take a look at that. And it's this hands-on tracing one. And so here you can see that the folder opens up. And I've got two files in here, swords.ping and then handsontracing.ai. Leave the swords.ping in that folder because the AI file is referencing it. All you have to do is double click the handsontracing.ai file to open up Illustrator and get started. So let's go back over to Illustrator and we will begin tracing this file. All right, so let's just review a little bit how this file's set up. I've got an image layer on the bottom and it is locked. And then I've got a tracing layer on top of that. Now, if you're new to layers, or you're a little confused on how layers work, fear not, I've got an awesome video that shows you how layers work. So just click the link that you see on the screen right now to go check out my layers video, or you can save it till the end of this video and watch it later on. But for now, let's grab the pen tool and we will get started. So I'm going to grab this pen tool right over here. And what I wanna do is I wanna pick a corner to start with. And I'm just gonna pick this top left corner up here and with the pen tool, all you need to do is just click and let go. And when you do that, you have a ghost image of the path that's going to be created connected to your cursor. Now this is unlike the pencil tool, so you don't click and drag to draw like you would the pencil tool. The pen tool is kind of like connect the dots if you don't have any dots, if that makes sense. We are actually going to create our dots or what they're referred to as anchor points as we go along. So each time I click the mouse, it's going to create an anchor point signifying the next segment of the path that we are creating. And by path, I'm talking about the outline of the object that we are tracing. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make this a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to click this corner here, if I can get right on it. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come all the way down to this next corner and click. And you can see I have this line is straight. It's not curving like what we had here. And now we also have this white happening. It's the fill. We don't want that. So I'm going to turn off the fill so that we can see the rest of the blade on this sword. I'm also going to turn off the stroke, the outline here. So I'm clicking the color panel and I'm turning that off. So that allows us to see exactly what we're working on as we're tracing. Now, the next step is to go around the object and I'm going to click each corner. So if you're following along, great. Just keep doing what I'm doing here. It's going to all come together here in a minute. Now, in this instance, I'm going to just add an anchor point right about here. That's probably good enough. And then another one here. And we're going to worry about these curves later on. So I'm just gonna keep going around the handle here and there. And I'm gonna add this next one right about here and that one there. And then the rest is pretty simple. I'm just going to click on the corners of this object. And then we go up here. We've got this funky little corner right here. I'm just gonna add the anchor point right there. That'll work. And then I'm gonna come down and click that corner and this one and go back up. Now, the last part is closing the path. Watch my cursor very carefully. When I go up and hover over the original anchor point, you'll see a circle appeared on the bottom right of my cursor. That signifies that the next click will close the path. So I'm going to do that. And now I have this closed path, but we are still not all the way there yet. We need to start curving some of these line segments on the path. 
To do that, I'm going to grab the direct selection tool and I'm going to start making edits to each one of these anchor points. So I'm going to click that anchor point and I'm going to zoom in and just make sure it's right on the corner. You don't have to be as picky as I am, but it is good practice. And now that we have it right on the corner, I'm going to click the convert selected anchor points to smooth. So I'm going to do that. You'll see that handles appeared flaring out from that anchor point. What I want to do is grab this handle and pull it all the way into that anchor point until it snaps. Now, if you don't have snapping turned on, you can click Command U on a Mac or Control U on a PC to turn snapping on or off. Now I only have one handle for this anchor point, and that's great because it's along the curved path. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to grab this handle to adjust that line segment curve and I'm gonna pull it in until I get it right where I want it. Now much of this step is actually just playing with it until you get it just right. So I'm gonna probably drop it right about there. It's following the path of the object pretty good right there, and I'm gonna just leave it as is. And then I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna look at my anchor points. This one could be moved just a little bit, so I'm gonna click and hold and drag it around until it's right on that corner, and I think that is good enough for me. This one I'm going to pull in a little bit right there. And then these two anchor points both need to be curved. So what I want to do is click and drag to select both of them and then choose the convert selected anchor points to smooth. And now I've got two anchor points that are going to be smooth. And I think I want to drag this one up just a hair right about there should be fine and i'm going to leave the handles on both sides of each anchor point to start with and at this point i'm going to turn snapping off because it's kind of messing me up a little bit so i'm going to click command u to turn that off and then i can adjust the handles without having them try to snap into place along the grid now i'm going to make adjustments just slight adjustments to each handle until i get it pretty close to being just right and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna slide this anchor point up just a hair to kind of have that curve to get right where I want it. And I'm gonna do this one just a little bit more, right like that. And then I'm gonna take this handle and just drag it up just a little bit. So you can see that that line segment is following that object curve very closely. And We've got this anchor point down here that needs to just move a little bit. Now, since I'm moving this, I want to go back to my previous anchor point to make sure that nothing changed too much. And I think we're all right. Maybe, maybe we can just pull this one down just a hair. You can see I'm being really picky. If you're new to this, please don't be as picky as I am. It may frustrate you a little. But as you get more experience with Illustrator, definitely try to be a little more picky to refine your work. And what I want to do here is convert both of these anchor points to curved. So I'm going to click this anchor point and I'm going to hold the shift key and click this anchor point too. So I just have those two anchor points selected and then I'm going to click the button and you can see it kind of threw all that out of whack, which is just fine. All I have to do is grab this handle here, bring it into the anchor point until it clicks. And you'll notice it's kind of not clicking because I need to turn snapping back on. I'm going to let go of the handle out here, choose Command U again to turn on my snapping, and now I can bring it in and it's going to snap right into that anchor point to make sure that it's in the anchor point. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to bring that in. Perfect. Now I can adjust each of these handles. I'm going to turn off snapping again, and I'm going to pull in those handles till, till they look right about where I want it. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this area here. And we're going to do the same thing we did up there. I'm going to select both of those anchor points, convert them to curved anchor points, and adjust the handles on each of these anchor points. Now be careful if you have both of them selected and you only want to adjust one, just make sure you click the anchor point so that that is the only one selected. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to bring this anchor point a little closer to the corner anchor point over here. And that allows me to get just a little more fine tuning with the actual curved part of the path. And I'm gonna bring that one back in. A good thing to remember is that if you're adjusting a curve and the curve is affected by the handles of two anchor points, if you make a change here, it's going to affect 
this anchor point over here potentially. I'm gonna undo that so we can go back to how it was. And this is starting to take shape really well. I'm going to go on to the next anchor point and just get these close enough to the corners so that it looks good. I'm gonna pull this one in closer to the corner here. And it looks like we can fine tune this one here. This one's, you know, in my opinion, way off, but you know, and there we go. Now we've got just a couple more to do. Now this one might be a little tricky. So we've got one anchor point, yet we've got two paths that need to curve, but that is going to be just fine. What we wanna do is click this anchor point here, convert it to a curved anchor point, and you can see that it just kind of blew this one wide open, which is fine. What we need to do is click and hold the Option key on a Mac or Alt key on the PC and click one of these handles. And while holding in that Option key, just drag it over here just a little bit. What happened here is it broke the connection for both of these handles, meaning each of these handles now operate independent of each other and you can adjust the curve of each line segment without affecting the other. Okay, so what I wanna do is just kinda line this up to the path, and I think that looks good on that one. And then this one, I think we are going to be fine right about here or so. And like I said, it's, it's gonna take a little bit of practice to play with where you wanna drop the handle so that you get the expected curve of that line segment. And what I wanna show you on this last anchor point is a word of caution, okay? So I'm going to click this anchor point and I'm going to convert it. Now what I need to do is curve just this part of the line segment without affecting this one. I can hold the Option key or the Alt key and move it again. And my word of caution is if you're going to do it that way, you need to hold the Option key before you grab the handle. Let's see what happens if I grab the handle first and then hold the option key. So I'm gonna click and hold the handle and then I'm going to hold down the option key. What happens here is you can see that I have a ghost image of my cursor. And what that means is that I am actually creating a copy of just this line segment. So if I click and drag and then let go, it looks like everything is fine, but in reality, I've just created a copy of that part of the segment and I'm going to mess myself up for the rest of the tracing. And a good way to tell that something went wrong is you don't see the rest of the path anymore. In order to see the rest of the path, what you can do is you can grab the selection tool. So I'm gonna click V, which is the quick key for the selection tool. And then I'm going to just click and drag. And now you can see that I have the path here, but then I've got two paths over here which is not what I want. So I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to grab the direct selection tool again by pressing A, which is the hot key or quick key for that tool. And I'm going to select just this path, but before I grab this handle, I'm going to hold down the option key, and then I'm going to move that path to where I want it. I'm gonna just drop it here for just a second while I grab this handle, and I've got to turn on snapping again with Command U and I'm going to hold that and drag it in to the anchor point so I don't have it anymore. And then I'm going to pull this handle just a little bit. I think that is going to be good right about there. That's gonna work out good. Now I've got a vector tracing of just this one sword. And what I wanna do is add a fill color just so we can see it. And it's looking pretty good. You can see I've got a little bit of correction to make there. I'm not going to do that right here, but you can definitely correct that if you made a similar mistake. So now I've got one of the objects traced. Well, I could go through and retrace this one if I wanted. An easier way would be to grab the selection tool and select the whole thing and hit copy. And then I'll just come over here and hit paste. So it's kind of away from this first one that we have here. I'm going to select both of the objects so that I have them selected. And then I'm going to click the one that I traced and you can see a, a kind of a darker outline and I'm going to choose a line to top. Okay, vertical align top. So these are now lining up with each other. I'm going to deselect both objects, select this one and right click it and choose transform and reflect. And what we want to do is click the preview button to make sure we're reflecting it correctly. And that looks good. 
So I'm going to hit OK. And now what I want to do is just drag this to the right. And I'm going to hold down the Shift key to constrain it so that it goes only left and right. And I'm going to drop it right there. And it looks like it snapped perfectly on top of that image. So great. So we're pretty much all the way there, except we don't have the breakpoint, which shows us that this first sword is on top. So what I want to do is expand this layer, which has the tracing on it. And I want to turn off the visibility for that first sword that we created by clicking this eyeball. Now I can make edits to this sword without affecting the original one that we did. So I'm going to select this second sword and I'm going to remove the fill color. And so now we have these outlines. You can see that there's a little bit of gap here between the original object and that part of the path. And it doesn't line up exactly perfectly, except it does over here. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of discrepancy between this sword and this one. If you want to have them be identical, then just follow along with me and, and how I do it. And then you can ensure that this path is actually going to be identical to this one, with the exception of the breakage that we're going to add to this line segment here. So what I want to do is click the Add an anchor point tool and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to click on the path right here where this corner is. I'm going to click on this path really close to the corner. Okay. And then I'm going to click on this path and this path right here. Now I'm going to come up and click on this one. And you can see I'm getting as close to the corner as I can. I'm just going to click on that one. And this one looks good and that one. So now I have anchor points that are going to be the corners for each of these paths. What I need to do now is add an anchor point to the middle of these, each one of them, and you can see exactly where I'm adding them, and then I want to actually delete them. So this is going to look a little funky, but I want to click the A button for the direct selection tool, Select that anchor point and make sure that is the only anchor point that is selected. You can tell that by ensuring that it is like a solid color and not a outline color like this one over here. And then click the delete key. Okay, so you see I've got this weird funky handle right there. That's fine. And then I'm going to select each of these middle ones and just choose the delete key. And that is it. So I'm very close now. What I want to do is just drag in these flyaway handles. I'm going to drag those into the anchor points. And we'll just do that on each one of those. You'll notice that it's kind of messing up the curvature, but as soon as it snaps into that anchor point, that goes away and problem solved. I'm going to pull that one in. Just a couple more. And okay, and then this last one. And then the final step is to select the anchor points that need to be connected to each other. So click one, hold down the shift key, and then select the second one, and then right click over that second anchor point and choose join. And you see that the path is now created here. And you do the exact same thing and choose join. Just make sure you don't connect the wrong anchor points, like don't connect this one to that one. So that will mess you up, but there's always undo if you do that. So I've got these two selected. I'm going to right click, choose join. I'm going to choose this one and this one. And this will actually close the path on this part. So now I can zoom all the way out. I'm going to click and drag to select both of these objects because now they're separate objects. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this one. And we'll add the red color to it. And I'm going to choose Command G or Control G on a PC to group them. So now this is one group. And then the final thing we need to do is turn on the visibility to the original sword that we traced. And then I'm going to hide the visibility for the original image. And now we have a vector file of that image that we just traced. Thank you for watching. I hope you were able to follow along a little bit and learn more about the pen tool and adjusting anchor points to trace literally anything you want. If you did find it valuable, please tap the subscribe button and check out some of my previous videos. Thanks again for watching.